I need to really understand what uploading every month means because to me that's uploading every two years apparently and I should probably also learn to like stick to one thing, stick to one niche instead of just stopping it and then continuing and doing another thing or even just thinking about what I really want to do before announcing it to everybody Recap, last video, I may have mentioned that I had found myself a new hobby or career, we'll call it that, in uh, photography and that I had enlisted myself to go to university and that I was so ready to like pursue, pursue this. Yeah, long story short, I didn't get in and then I had a little, uh, we'll call it early life crisis. Basically that has led me to months of just trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life and now I've opted to study English literature at home and read loads of books and write stories, so there's the little filler. Among my journey of self-discovery of what I wanted to do with my life, I have done a little bit of book collecting. And by a little bit, I mean it's probably become like a habit where I spend like 30, 40 euros every month on a couple books. To a point where it's literally addicting where I would spend hours looking at books that I want to buy. And a lot of these books have been from Barnes & Noble. I'm beyond attached to these books. A lot of them I have reread or I've read already when I was younger or I never had my own copy. So I thought, why not buy them and buy them in a little limited edition version. But since I have so many, I thought I'd do a little poll or review of a few of my favorite books and then in future just go through my whole collection as it grows and as I order more books. So the Barnes & Noble Leatherbound Collectible Edition thingy books are very, very beautiful. They're all lovely. The leather is amazing and the prints are just... And I can't get enough of them. I really just, I, if I had all the money in the world, I would buy them all. Or if they would ship to my address, I would order them all. But sadly, there's only a limited of them available. So what to do? A lot of these, well, most of them are literary classics. So I'm talking about uh, Charlotte Brown, Charles Dickens, Shakespeare, because I am a Shakespeare nerd by heart and will always will be. Or just a bunch of stories that had been read to me growing up that I never actually fully understood. So I've decided to buy them again and give it a go. I am going to talk about a few of these books in depth and also, in a sense, review them, reviewing the cover, reviewing the book material, and just giving my point of view of what I love about the book. So for part one of this little book haul series, I'm going to be reviewing my soft leather bound collection. The very, very first book that I bought from Barnes & Nobles was Dracula. As you can see already, it has a lovely soft red leather bound um, feel to it. It is amazing. Um, the pages are also lined with black. They do have a hard cover, like a hard leather bound version, kind of like the rest of these, which I'll get into in another episode. And that also looks amazing. It's, they have one in the same version as this, but in hard red leather. And they also have another one, which I'm hoping to get at some point. And it is a, um, I'll put a little photo of what it looks like over here. It is a black gold or black and red hard leather edition which looks beautiful and if I could add it to my collection yes I will have multiple books of it but I will add it to my collection in a heartbeat. This is how it looks close up. I will say the only thing about it is that because it's somewhat it's it's a print on red leather so the ink does come off a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yes if you can see it's got some smudges some of the, the titling so the silver has smudged off. It is because it's not actually pressed in. It's more just ink printed on onto the red leather and because the red leather is so fine and so soft I have a feeling that one slight of oil or touch to it would just make it smear off. Here you can see the spine of the book. It is again here. The silver has come off a little bit. The blurb or the back of this book really, um, all it says is listen to them, the children of the night, what music they make and that is quoted by Dracula who is in the book. Obviously it's the title. Inside gives a really creepy little coffin vibe is what I thought the first time I saw it and it looks good. I mean it just, it's just wood, kind of looks like paint, kind of looks like wood, sort of like a vampirific type feel and it's like that in the front. So at the beginning of the book and at the end, so just repeating the style. And besides that, it's, I mean, it looks nice. The opening page is basically the same as the title, but in normal ink. The print is slightly smaller than I would have liked. It is a lot to read through. And if you need glasses, definitely use glasses. If you don't, definitely use glasses because apparently I can't read. It comes with a lovely little silk red ribbon which is amazing and cute and 
definitely saves getting on bookmarks because I lose those all the time. About this specific book I was really excited to buy because I read Dracula years ago when I was younger and never fully understood it and then I read it again and I still don't fully understand it. Okay I do understand it, I understand the concept, uh, why am I saying concept? Con concept, concept. I understand the concept, I understand the characters, the language. It is also very old English, the words and the, and the grammar that is used is also very old English. So not a recommendation for people who struggle already with reading books that use bigger words. A lot of big words, get out a dictionary. But only issue I had with Dracula, I do love it, I love the whole entire story behind it. Only thing that really ticked me off was the ending. And it's not a surprise, okay, I read this book years ago and I just forgot the ending, I was kind of remembering a big huzzah and yes, a triumph. But then reading it now, older, understanding what's happening, slight, slightly disappointed. And I, and, I, and I love Bram Stoker, you know, his works are amazing, the way he encapsulates his characters in Dracula is wonderful. The way he captures Jonathan Harker's journey through Transylvania and just the way he also describes Dracula himself is oh, complete. It's a new concept to well, not new. It's the original concept of how Dracula was portrayed, somewhat, I guess, in literary works. But it was just the ending that was so anticlimactic. But anyways, I'm not going to go into a full round of that because there are a lot of people who would probably have my head off for that. On to the next book, which is this lovely cover of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. As you can see, it is not as used as Dracula. I have yet to fully read it again, but I have been trying to reread it because for my university course, I did a section of philosophy which was concentrating a lot of Mary Wollstonecraft. Time to go on a little uh, journey rant of sorts. Mary Wollstonecraft was a great feminist philosopher, and believe it or not, she is also the mother of Mary Shelley. Looking into all of that, I decided to give Frankenstein a reread. Still halfway through it, but if you understand the meaning between the relationship between mother and daughter, most likely within Mary Shelley and Mary Wollstonecraft, you kind of see the difference between how Frankenstein and his monster is portrayed. Originally, it's always, you know, oh, it's the monster. Yes, there is some slight melodramatic bits of where you feel sympathy for it. But now linking that connection between Mary Shelley and Mary Wollstonecraft, her mother, it kind of, I don't know, it, it gives you a different, different a view of it, a different perspective. Back to the book, that's what we're talking about. Enough about that. It is lovely, I will try to do a close-up if my camera will focus. It is a lovely black soft leather bound book with a silver imprint, well not imprint, it's ink on top and then um, a little red leather on here as well. And on the back it says, you are my traitor but I am your master, obey. I do like that instead of having full page blurb or little reviews of what, what people think of the book. It just has one line that is said in the book and uh, it can be quite impactful really. The spine is the same as the front. It's got that black leather spine with the silver little details. Lovely. No ink has smudged off it yet. What I really really love about this book is just the inside. The design is lovely. I mean, okay yes, it's a bit of just ink and maybe blood plasma, who knows. But it just looks lovely, doesn't it? It just, it just, it's very eye-catching. And that repeats again in the front and in the back. The first proper page is also just the same as the front of the, of the book. With this, the print is also slightly smaller, but you know, just gotta, just gotta go with it. I probably need glasses, but who knows. It also comes with a lovely black silk ribbon. Again, really nice touch, saves getting a bookmark. The size of this is also somewhat of like a faded red. It's not really blood red, but it's also just enough to make it look nice. This used to come in a hard leather bound edition. Same copy exactly like this, but it was a shiny hard black leather. I unfortunately couldn't get it, I couldn't find it anywhere. So if anybody can send the link or even, um, you know, provide me with one, I would love to add it to my collection. But for now, I really love the soft leather bound edition. It's also a lot easier to read, I will say. Soft leather bound editions are very nice to read. They fold in your hands, you know, you can do that. Obviously, don't bend the book have respect for your books. Another one of my early purchases and probably one of my favorite looking books has to be Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Oh, Oscar, how you've captivated my heart with your writings. But look at this book, it is gorgeous. It is actually printed in, it's pressed on, it's got gold engravings and when you touch it, it just, it's amazing. The si It's purple and gold, what more do you want? The sides are green and it comes with a lovely light gold ribbon. It's just amazing. If, I'm gonna get a nice little close up look. If you can see the engravings there, I'm gonna try to shine it in the light. The spine is also just beautiful. And the back, again, I like the other ones, it's actually had the blurb quote pressed into the soft leather. So if you can see it here, it's actually got a shadow because it's actually just pressed in. Unlike Frankenstein and Dracula and a few other ones that I own, it's act these are just ink. 
so it adds a nice little touch and the back is also beautiful can you see this it's just it, it's amazing and the back says if it were i who was to be always young and a picture that was to grow old for that for that i would give everything and that is dorian gray just so you know again the first time i read this book i was very very young i didn't understand the whole entire thing that was going on and i was actually quite scared of what was happening in the book because it's i'm not gonna you know, spoil anything, but I mean, you should have read this book by now. Kind of, I didn't understand what was going on. I didn't, I didn't quite understand the language. Again, the language is very old. It's, set, it's a time period piece, of course. I didn't understand the way Dory was thinking, the way he was just his own words, and the way he was treating Basil. It just became a bit, I don't know. As you know, I was probably about 10 or 11 when I first read the book. So rereading it now, fantastic. Lovely, lovely book. Would definitely read it again and would recommend to anybody who's looking for a good book to buy. This copy is beautiful. That's all I have to say. And before I forget, I completely forgot about that. The inside of this book is like this. It's got almost, I don't know how to describe it really. Again, just kind of like paint, really. And that repeats itself in the front and in the back. The text is the same as the other ones. Slightly small, but what to do. On to a slightly more different type of soft leather bound book that I got from Barnes & Noble. It's this pocket edition love poem book. It is stunning. It is a pleasure to hold. It is, I keep it everywhere in my handbag. It is just amazing. It is just so cute and I love it. And here's a close up of how it looks like. Different type of leather. It is more of a leathery feel. The other one's more of like a fake pleather type feel. This one actually feels like leather and it's got a shiny engraving on it. And um, you know, it's, it's, it's like a pink, it's pink leather with pink shiny metallic ink on it and gold and it's lovely and even the sides if my lighting will allow it's just how, be how beautiful is this i think the colors complement it very well the inside is like a yellow canary yellow type color and i think with the pink red it just looks amazing a lovely addition to any type of handbag or little gifts or anything these are really really good They're, i think probably some go for about 12 euros some go to about 25 euros depending on the edition that you get lovely gift I love these. There are so many more pocket edition books I would love to get from Barnes and Nobles, and this just happens to be one of my favorites. Go back to the soft leather bound books. We have the Scarlet Letter. So this is just the same as the Frankenstein book. It is a black soft leather bound book with silver ink and a little bit of red detailing, and pretty much the rest of it's just in silver. The side of it is also the same color. I don't think. I think this one might actually be a bit more red than the other one. Yeah. So, um, Scarlet Letter has a more of like a deeper, more brighter red um, edge than Frankenstein. It is a lovely book to hold. I have yet to actually properly give this a good read. I did read it years ago in school, more or less, I think, in year six or year seven, maybe year eight. And then I didn't really pay attention to it because, you know, you're in school. And I, it was my book at that time, but I felt like giving it a, a reread and I probably will with quarantine being a thing. I'll give you one more proper look at the front and of the back and just like the rest of them it only has a little line from the book and this one says the scarlet letter was her passport into regions where other women dared not tread again i feel like now i would probably understand this book more and actually take more of an interest i do want to read it i do have loads of time i have three weeks until i need to go back to work so why not the inside of this book is also really lovely it looks like this and again it's following that type of blood type of theme it's really really good it, it's more of like a like a marble ink i think that's the word i was looking for looking for before and it's a kind of like a, a red marble ink look and it repeats the same in the back the text is the same as the other ones i probably just need glasses slightly smaller than the rest oh do you hear that that's 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 the pages again it comes with a lovely silk little ribbon as a bookmark always a pro and for my very last little review i am showing you the lovely lovely cover of pride and prejudice by jane austen doesn't this just look charming i mean the baby blue with the silver and the slight gold detailings it's just what can't you love about this this edition it is just a lovely lovely cover it is just beautiful on the side on the spine and on the back i love jane austen i love this cover i do have another barnes and noble left bound edition which is seven novels of jane austen and if you would like for me to review that and show you that give this video a little like and a comment or do whatever you want to let me know that you actually want more of these but this is just stunning i absolutely i absolutely love it the inside is beautiful it's kind of reminds me of like kind of like um what's that animal really is it peacock peacock right asking as if i know that you guys are going to reply kind of reminds me of like a peacock type of design um 
the back of this book, just like the other ones, only has a line from the book. And on the back of this one says, be prepared to be bewildered by this lovely sentence. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. If that single line does not make you want to read Pride and Prejudice and any more Jane Austen's work, I don't know what will. Pride and Prejudice, one of my favourite books out there. I read the book when I was younger and I also saw the movie and I just, I love it. It's everything about it is just magical and just gives you this sense of pride. The side of this book is also like a lime green, which again complements the baby blue, the kind of like gold and silver on it. Inside of course the text is still smaller but it looks lovely and it comes with a lovely kind of like a light, light gold, very light little silk ribbon as a bookmark and it is just lovely. But that was just a short little uh, look at what I have in my collection. I do have way more books and as you can see behind me I have a lot of books to review so if you would like to know more about these books from Barnes and Nobles or from other publishers and places leave a comment and a like and I'll get right to it. But that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope that this gives you an insight of what to buy, of what to order for people, for yourself, for your own bookshelf. I really, really enjoy my books and I really love my books. I love them more than a lot of things that I own and I would literally fight someone for if they like if they came and touched my books without permission. They're like my everything. With this video ending, I wish you all a lovely day and continue reading. You know, quarantine's here, so read a lot of books, get lost in the world, and of course, stay safe and stay clean. Bye!